What is going on, everybody? It is the Misfit Bear, and finally, welcome back to Near Replicate. I definitely missed this game. We're gonna see this game completed. We're gonna get. We're gonna remember the buttons. Number one, number two. We're gonna. We're we're we're, we're gonna. Yes, we're gonna get that herb. And uh, our mission is to talk to Popola. I really enjoyed Resident Evil Village, but you know, I'm really glad to be back into this game and we're gonna see this game to its completion. Uh, the, the good music. It's, uh, it's a good thing to come back to after all those scares. And I hope you guys are still interested because I'm still gonna play it. What's good with your girl? Hmm. What you think about? What's up, Popola? Oh, hi. I just got a strange letter in the mail. Dearest Popola, I hope this letter finds you well. I am writing in hopes of bringing to your attention a certain dream issue of concern regarding recent events in the dream... In Dream the Village. What? I was hoping I might be dream able to get your advice dream on the matter. Recently there have been dream reports, dream dream of a certain dream, and, and then it just, and, it, it, okay, never mind. That is certainly one bizarre <laughs> piece of writing. I should have just kept on reading. Who's it from? <laughs> the mayor of a small village in the Forest of Myth. It's a wooded area up north. The Forest of Myth? Ah. They're usually a bright and cheerful group of people. Something like this is very out of character for them. Yeah. I have a bad feeling about this. I'll check it out. Uh, you will? But... No, I got this. Don't worry about it. I've got business there anyway. Oh, well, all right. I got this. Thank you. No problem. I gotta remember the buttons. Now I'm gonna start selecting everything with X. Okay. All right. Just gotta remember the buttons. That's how to do that. That's how to do that. That's how to do that. Okay, cool. All right. Can we take on the boar now? With the help of Kaine, can we take on the boar? I don't know, but I'm a sure as hell try. Y'all saw me locked onto that sucker. You saw it. You saw me locked on! There is no way! There is no way! You saw me locked on! I got freaking gypped! I got gypped! Alright! Let's try this again! It's a wild boar! Thank you! Have you the skill to hunt one of those down? We're gonna find out! I don't know. They look pretty strong. Oh, yeah! I remember you can ride this sucker, but I don't remember. Kaine, are you gonna help me or not? <sighs> this is impossible! It, it, it would be possible if I had some help! It wouldn't be impossible if I had help. And now she's just jumping around. Go ahead, come back over to this rock. <laughs> Go ahead, come back over to this rock. Go ahead. Go ahead, right here. All right, yeah, here we go. Yeah! There we go! Just had to do a little bit of cheese, that was all. That was all. I wouldn't have had to if I would have had some help, but what can you do, right? Ooh, okay. Here we go. A completely different route in the most common, you know, directional plane we got. Forest of Myth. Yeah, it's like every single time the world falls into catastrophe, it sure quiet it's like we, you know, revert back to 
way. Our primitive ways. That just goes to show you everything comes full circle. Such cheek. Yeah, I got cheeks. What of it? <laughs> All righty, let's see. Herb. Magic capsule. I don't remember what that did. Hold on, let me find out. Wait. That's not the... Okay, yeah, here we go. Uh, not there. Uh, items. Recovery. Magic capsule. Doubles magic for 60 seconds. Okay. Beware. Beware of what, Zeke? Jaeger? Beware. The words. The sealed verse. The words? What do you mean? Contagious words. Those who dream. Those who dream? Hold a moment. There's a strange new sensation in my mind. Is that so? Vice's voice rose in a quizzical way. It is not quizzical. <laughs> What's going on? The villager's body shuddered as he slowly opened his eyes. Perhaps we should start by asking this man. Uh, who are you? We heard something happened to this village, so we came to see if we could help. Right? He stared. If you can speak to me, I must have caught you in my dream. Oh, we're in his head? In your dream? The mayor explained. In the past weeks, a mysterious disease called the Death Dream had spread across the forest of myth. Those who caught it were cursed to fall asleep and live forever within the world of their own dreams. The village mayor had determined the Death Dream was spread from person to person by spoken words, but before he could learn more, the disease took him as well. Vice stared at the mayor, his mouth twitching now slightly. see here. Are he you said, saying that we've been absorbed <laughs> into your dream? It's like a book. Well, yes. Said the mayor. I think you have. <laughs> In other words, said me. the death dream? Before the mayor could confirm my suspicion, Vice exploded with rage. Ridiculous. Preposterous. Completely unfathomable on every conceivable level. I don't even recall falling asleep. That's just how the death dream works. Though polite, the mayor was clearly trying to brush aside the book's remarks. My remarks are not to be brushed aside, fool. The mayor twisted his mouth into an embarrassed grimace, then quickly changed the subject to who I had seen and what they had discussed since coming to the village. Something there must have caused you to enter my dream, said the mayor. A certain conversation. A specific word. Something. The word dream. Racked their brains, but could find no easy solutions. There was simply too many words to consider. Too much random chatter. Too many meaningless conversations. Grimoire Vice does not engage in meaningless conversations. The mere suggestion that Vice chose his words carelessly seemed to sting his pride. It does not seem to sting my pride, you bloated gasbag of a narrator. Yeah, we're like breaking... We're like breaking fourth walls, fifth walls, all those walls. It utterly. <laughs> Irritated, Vice looked skyward, as if searching for answers in the heavens. I was doing no such thing. Just leave me alone already. <laughs> the anger created by his harsh words bled over to me like a contagion. <laughs> Wait, said I suddenly. Did someone just say contagion? Yes, I believe so. What of it? Well, the villager told us to watch out for contagious words, right? The mayor leaned forward with renewed interest, pushing a startled vice aside in the process. He must have said something, right? Asked the mayor. Some specific combination of words. What was it? It was about dreaming or something that dreams or... Oh, what the hell was it? A sheep! Cried vice suddenly, blurting out the first thing that popped into his head. The others stared at him for a moment before slowly shaking their heads. After a few more minutes of thought, my face suddenly lit up. I remember, he said, those who dream. That's what he said, I'm sure of it. At this, the mayor produced a thick sheaf of papers from his pocket. He flipped through them a few times before finally nodding his approval. That sounds right, he said, as a stray sheet of paper fluttered to the ground. My notes also mentioned something about that. I bet it was the last thing you heard before you fell asleep. The mayor shook his head, his worn pencil stub tracing lines across a lone piece of paper. 
For the last month, I've done nothing but studied the disease we call the death dream, he said. I mean, I'm the mayor, right? It's my job to protect people from whatever comes along, but I never expected a couple of outsiders to start entering people's dreams. The mayor paused, a grimace crossing his face. I should probably be taking notes or something. Vice immediately fired back. I applaud the force of will it takes to research a disease in your dreams, he said. But perhaps we should bend your efforts to escaping this place instead of trying to understand it. The mayor's hand tightened around his pencil, snapping off the tip. I've tried to escape. From the very first moment I realized I was locked inside my own dream, I've been looking for a way out, but I don't think it exists. I mean, this is my dream, right? If there was an exit, I'd know about it. He paused for a moment, his unfocused eyes staring at nothing. My village was beautiful, he said to no one in particular, and it was filled with the most wonderful people you could ever hope to meet. But once this disease took hold, things changed. It's like someone took a sponge and soaked all the color out of our lives. I just want us to be whole again. I want us to be free. And I won't stop trying until it happens. I nodded in agreement. Huh? Wait a second. I didn't nod. Look, if we can be of any help, said I, just ask. Now hold on, I did not just say that. Silence, cried Vice. The grimoire looked from Misfit Bear to the mayor and back again, his face filled with confidence. Grimoire Vice's face is always confident. Thank you very much. Now see here, mayor. You told us that nothing can exist in this dream without you knowing of it. But yet you seem surprised to see us when we first arrived, Jess. The mayor slowly raised his head, realization dawning on his face. Oh my god, he said. You're right, you're right. I had no idea you were coming. The human imagination is a limitless engine, said Vice, and dreams are the fuel. If you can imagine an exit, then it must be so. With your permission, we shall search it out. Thank you, said the mayor. I don't know how I can repay you. Payment is not required. We are as eager as you to be done with this place. The mayor suddenly felt as if he could breathe again. He'd almost forgotten what it was like. Good luck, you two, he called at the departing forms of me and Vice. We're all counting on you. As I slowly faded into the misty forest, the mayor was struck by a sense of deja vu. I saw this man once before, he thought. But where? My mood darkened as I trudged through the forest. Hours later, when the beauty of the place was still a new thing, he'd been confident they could get in, find the exit, and be home in time for dinner. But the deeper they went, the more the forest closed in around them, the mist made it difficult to see more than a foot in any direction, and moss-covered rocks seemed determined to twist his ankle. More than once, he'd been forced to steady himself on the rough bark of a tree, and his hands now left small trails of blood on everything he touched. Additionally, Vice was proving to be a spectacularly poor traveling companion. Unhindered by either terrain nor physical effort, he spent most of his time urging Misfit Bear to pick up the pace and grumbling about their slow progress. Finally, after Vice muttered something about legless turtles being more adept at navigating the environment, I snapped. Okay, Vice, cram it for a second, would you? You don't have to walk. Misfit Bear leaned against a tree and tried to stretch the knots from his back. How can this stupid forest be so big, he muttered to himself. The moment the words tumbled from his mouth, a cacophony of insects sprang to life. Every imaginable form of buzz, click, and hiss roared out at a volume that rattled his teeth. Misfit Bear slapped his hands over his ears and screamed to be heard, Vice, what's going on? Misfit Bear could see Vice's mouth moving, but he might as well have been shouting in a tornado. The insects screamed, the forest howled, and then, just as Misfit Bear's ears seemed ready to tear from his head and go running for cover, the sound diminished. Hesitantly, he removed the hand from his left ear and listened to the creatures of the woods. Zri, 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 zri. <laughs> that, that, and that, and that, and that. As the insect symphony <laughs> dimmed another decibel, Misfit Bear began to detect patterns in the sound. This isn't random, he thought. It's not just white noise, it's something else. The insects weren't just calling out, they were asking a question. One with it is lacking, two with it is ideal, three with it is dangerous. What is it? By my pages, it's a riddle! I guess so. I mean, it feels sort of forced, but maybe it's the key to getting out of this place. Then I leave it to you to answer. 
One with it is lacking, two with it is ideal, three with it is dangerous. What is it? Inwardly furious that Vice left the task to him, Miss Fibber sighed and gave the only answer that made sense. It's a secret, right? The sound of the insect stopped as suddenly as it began. The forest undergrowth parted before Misfit Bear like a rippling wave, opening a new path. These forest arthropods are making a road for us, said Vice with glee. Pleased at passing the test, Misfit Bear moved on with new intensity. The path offered his body relief from the undergrowth, but gave even greater cheer to his mind. As long as they were on a path, their journey had a purpose. I guess the forest has accepted us, huh? said Misfit Bear after a bit. Vice spun around to face his companion. Do not mistake the will of this forest for some happy pet you can suddenly befriend. We have no idea where this path leads. As Vice finished speaking, the pair turned a corner and found themselves facing a clear forest spring. Smiling, Misfit Bear picked up a small rock and sent it skipping across the surface of the water. Good heavens, said Vice. His surprise was understandable. Each time the rock struck the surface of the water, a musical note rang out. When the rock finally stopped moving and sank to the bottom of the spring, the ripples it left behind came together to form words. I enter through the window but break no glass. When night falls, I vanish. What am I? Absurdly easy, barked Vice. Now answer it. Misfit Bear grit his teeth and tried not to reach out and strangle his companion. He's right after all. This one is pretty easy. I enter through the window but break no glass. When night falls, I vanish. What am I? Sunlight. A plume of water suddenly burst from the spring. Sunlight filtered through the trees and reflected off the plume, creating a shimmering rainbow that spanned the entire horizon. In all my years, said Vice softly, I have never seen such a sight. Perhaps I have misunderstood the intentions of this place. Hey, look, cried Misfit Bear, awaking Vice from his daze. There's a house or something over there. Glancing in the direction of his friend's extended hand, Vice saw a small cottage nestled among the trees. That's weird, isn't it, Vice? I mean, who would build a house all the way out here? Misfit Bear walked over and pounded on the door. After a minute of solid banging, the door cracked open and a small man peered out. His body was cloaked from neck to toe in a large black cape, while his face was obscured by mist. Um, began Misfit Bear, but before he could get any further, the cloaked man held a hand up and began speaking. I have four legs in the morning and two at noon, but in the night with three. What am I? Misfit Bear tried to ask the cloaked man who he was and what he was doing there, but he simply repeated the question. If we wish to engage this man in conversation, said Vice, it seems we must answer his riddle. Yeah, I suppose, said Misfit Bear. Well, at least it's an easy one. I have four legs in the morning and two at noon, but in the night with three. What am I? I think it's a, a man? The mist dissolved from the cloak figure as he spoke a single word. Correct. With that, the man flung his garment aside, revealing his true identity. Y you're the mayor, cried Misfit Bear. The small man slowly shook his head. I am not the mayor you know. Now listen to my words. Long ago, I saw a vision of you that was not yourself. Uh, sorry? What's that mean? It will make sense in time. At present, I simply congratulate you on cracking the seal of the death dream. Now you must go to the person at the forest entrance. With that, the man turned on his heel and slammed the door behind him. As Misfit Bear watched, mist seeped up from the ground and enveloped the cottage, erasing it from existence. When Misfit Bear and Weiss, Vice returned to the forest entrance, they found the mayor leaning against a tree. As soon as he caught sight of the duo, he sprang to his feet and scrambled over to them. Good gravy, he cried. You made it. You actually made it back. His left hand grasped Misfit, Misfit Bear's and plumped it so fiercely it threatened to dislodge from the socket, while his right seized Vice by the cover and swung him through the air. Gah! By the heavens, stop shaking me, fool! We have not even told you if we were successful or not! The mayor smiled broadly and shook his head. I'm just happy you're alive. I didn't think I'd ever see you again. Misfit Bear withdrew himself from the mayor's eager handshake with a slight smile. We broke the death dream seal, he said. At least, I think we did. The mayor's face beamed as Misfit Bear filled him in on the details. When the tale was done, the three of them laid down on the forest ground and fell asleep. Misfit Bear cocked his head. Okay, hang on a second. This is crazy. Why would we just lay down and go to sleep? 
Cease your endless prattle and go to sleep, fool. Fighting against the rules of this place is futility itself. Misfit Bear and the mayor obediently reclined atop the grassy earth. Have you forgotten, continued Vice, it is words that control the death dream. Words that allow us to move from place to place. No matter how unnatural they seem, the words are absolute. Therefore, if the words tell us to sleep, then sleep we shall. And once we do, the story will continue. With that, the trio found their eyes growing heavy, their breath slowing. This is the first time, began the mayor, the first time I have felt tired since I was imprisoned here. His words were cut off by a loud, long yawn, and he remembered nothing more. They might have slept for an hour or a year. When they awoke, things had a slightly more real quality to them. The mist felt thicker, the leaves greener. It was clear that they had awakened from their dream. Misfit Bear shook the mayor's shoulder gently. Good news, he said. I think we made it. Oh, wow, said the mayor in an awed voice. We did. I'm back. He blinked once and then again, as if not quite believing the sight before him. You two have no idea how much this means. The death dream was spreading through our village, and I wanted to. Well, I thought I could figure out how to stop it, but I guess that wasn't the case. I must have caught the disease and become trapped in my own dream. The mayor started to stand, then collapsed back to the earth. He stared at his legs as if trying to remember how they worked, then glanced at Misfit Bear and shrugged. Without a word, the young man reached down and pulled the mayor to his feet. Real life may take some getting used to, said the mayor as a wry smile crossed his lips. You shall relearn in short order, I am sure, said Vice. For now, you should return to your home and rest. No, said the mayor, swaying on unsteady feet. No, I can't. Some of the villagers are still trapped in the death dream. I have to save them. The mayor slowly made his way to the divine tree in the center of the village, then bowed his head and prayed silently. This is a holy tree, he explained when the prayer was finished. It's the guardian of our village's history and memories. Superstition will only make our mission harder, muttered Vice. We should not put our faith in the gods. The mayor shook his head. Not the gods, the words. Legend says that our tree is home to a powerful magic known as a sealed verse. Misfit Bear and Vice could not contain their surprise. It seemed a goal had been found in the most unexpected of places. I say, muttered Vice, this is certainly a stroke of luck. As the three of them said their goodbyes, Misfit Bear mentioned the strange man who had given them the third riddle and the mysterious words he had left with them. I once saw a version of you that was not yourself, muttered the mayor. What in the world does that mean? Lost in thought, he stared into space for a long moment. You know, he said softly, this is going to sound odd, but I had a feeling I'd seen you before too. Misfit Bear tried to keep a straight face and failed, but the mayor didn't seem to notice. Deja vu, right? Anyway, I figure it's just some kind of illusion created by the death dream. It probably doesn't mean anything. Misfit Bear gave the mayor a nod and a smile, but inwardly, his thoughts were racing. There's something wrong about the mayor and his words, and what exactly is going on here? That riddle would prove to be the most difficult one of all. Oh, thank you so much. Now I can finally return to a normal life. This is one of the most bizarre diseases I have ever encountered. Yep. I know. That's why we have to help the other villagers, no matter what. Dark Execution. Summon magical spikes from the ground to impale enemies. Charge to increase number of spikes. Yeah. A sealed verse. That didn't take much effort. Yeah, it just took yes. some reading. Well, a touch too easy, if you ask me. Just took some it's reading. almost as if someone was guiding us to this village. Don't overthink advice. And it makes you wonder how uh they were able... Yeah, you can actually go and save all the different villagers. It's a wonder how anybody was able to send a letter from here. But that was a while of just reading. I hope I still have y'all's attention. <laughs> Opala, I went on the greatest acid trip ever. The death dream certainly is a strange illness. Yeah. Yeah, it was something all right. We got caught in it. Even I, with my natural love for words, have no desire to visit that place ever again. You guys did well. You've been making a lot of long trips lately. Are you sure you're not pushing yourself too hard? No, we got this. I'm okay. I can't just sit around all day while Yona's sick, after all. 
if you say so. So, anything I can do for you? Well, I suppose there is one thing I could use a hand with. The canal. Have you heard about our plans to repair the canal? The work probably won't happen for a while, but once it's done, we can use the canal for trade and travel and all kinds of useful things. Huh. Unfortunately, however, we're a bit behind schedule at the moment. If you're willing to help out, I'd really appreciate it. What can I do? No problem. What do you need? Great. So, the man I originally asked to help on this project uh -oh. hasn't shown up for work in a few days. I'm starting to get a little worried. So, maybe you can head over to Seafront and check up on him? I'll mark the location of his house on your map. He Will always do. carries a red bag over his shoulder, so he should be easy enough to find. Got it. Well, I will see you guys where the sun shines. If I remember right, I think the, uh, the fairy would be how we fast travel. There he is. Um, hey, uh, are you the guy who's supposed to help repair the canal? Popola sent me to... Oh, God, it's over. My life is over. What happened, bruh? Surely you must realize nothing good can come of being involved with this particular endeavor. Easy, Vice. Hey, yeah, so, like, are you alright? What happened? What happened? It's my wife. She left home a week oh. ago and hasn't come back. Oh, no. I'm so worried I can't even focus on my work. Oh, my sweet dumpling, where are you? <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Would you like us to help you look for her? Really? You do that for me? Yeah. Sure. Er, but do you have any idea where we should start? Hmm. Well, she always used to enjoy drinking at the tavern with her friends. All right, then I guess we'll start with them. I mean, I was hungry Thank anyways. You. This means the world to me. Oh, and by the way, my wife always carries a red bag just like mine. If you mention that, it might ring some bells. I've met some odd couples in my day, but none who felt the need to wander about flaunting matching luggage. Hey, some people do that, man. <laughs> you need to get with the times. Coordinated outfits are all the rage. Yeah, Plus, pe these bags are it. special. We bought them for our anniversary. But now my sweet dumpling is gone. <laughs> and it's all my fault. Oh, God. Okay, okay. Just How is it home. your fault, though? We'll go look for her, all right? You sit tight. Like, how is it your fault, bruh? <laughs> I'm willing to bet that man knows more about his wife absconding than he's letting on. Ooh, what's that? Hold on, I'm gonna go look for the I'm gonna go look for the man's wife. I want that shiny! <sighs> I could stare at I thought it was gonna tell me to like turn around. I want this. <laughs> Hello, seal. All right, so it's right here. All right, is it you? Hey there, I'm a. Look it almost looked like it. Carrying a red bag. Are you now? Interesting. Did something happen to her? You just trying to be nosy? She hasn't been home, and her husband's worried. Do you know anything about where she might be? You sound nosy. <laughs> Trouble in paradise, is it? Oh, those two never change. Oh, so you know! Anyway, the short answer is no. She hasn't been around here, either. Though, come to think of it, she always got on well with the woman over at the tackle shop. Maybe you should try her? I'll do that. Thanks. Hey, what's the rush? You've got a cute face. Why not sit here and join me for a round? Or th uh... Sorry, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not old enough to drink. I'm not an adult. <laughs> I'm not an adult. Hold up now. I swear, I want to start that fishing mission, but I don't want to drag the game out too much. Uh, is it you? Hey there. Do you know a woman with a red bag by any chance? A red bag? Oh, sure. Although now that I think about it, I haven't seen her in a while. Hmm. Last time she came around, she mentioned something about leaving town, but I figured it was just idle talk. Leaving town, huh? All right, thanks for your time. Okay. If she has truly left this charming hamlet, finding her may prove most difficult indeed. Very much I so. I just hope she hasn't been attacked by shades or anything. 
Well, alrighty, let's, uh... Trust me, bro, I know. Obtained a red bag. Oh, boy! It is identical to the red satchel carried by the man who sent us on this mad quest. Oh, boy! Oh, no. Do you think the Shades got her? I fear it likely, lad. I sense no other activity in the immediate vicinity. We were too late. Well, this is terrible. What are we supposed to But what to was say? she doing? However difficult it may be, we've no choice but to tell the man the truth. What was she doing, though? I don't know what to tell you. Uh... Hey! Ezio. Did you find my sweet dumpling? We didn't, but... We got this off a of shade. And it was a different looking shade, too. I'm sorry, bruh. Oh no! This... This is hers! So our fears were correct. Oh god. How could this happen to her? <laughs> this is all my fault. Why is this all his fault? I'm gonna ask him! If I may, my good man, why did your wife leave home in the first place? It's because... Because I... <laughs> I think we should give him some time to himself, Vice. I mean, I was... Honey, I'm home! Good heavens, you're a wreck! What's wrong? What?! Dumpling! You're not dead! What?! <laughs> what in the world are you talking about? Oh, oh, you found my bag. Thank you so much. I can't believe I went and dropped it like that. Mm. <laughs> this is such a Okay. Relief. Okay. Okay, seriously. What's going on? I'd like to know that. Five minutes later. I see. So, he found a shade with my bag and assumed I'd been attacked and killed? Yeah! I'm just glad you're safe, Dumpling. But I'm also so sorry. This is all my fault. Oh, if I didn't eat that apple you were saving. Oh, oh come God, on, bruh. such an idiot! Oh, come on, bruh. Listen, I promise I'll never eat anything of yours again. You just promise never to run away from home again, okay? Run away? Have you lost your mind? <laughs> I just went to visit my parents. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you poor man. I told you about this. Going to see my family, gone for a week. <laughs> Remember? Oh, you poor man. <laughs> Ugh, are you serious right now? Why don't you ever listen to me? <laughs> um. Lad, my brilliant intuition suggests we should beat a hasty retreat from these two with all yeah. speed. Let it let them hash this out. Okay, well that was easy. This was exhausting. <laughs> Tell me about it. Anyway, let's go give Popola an update. So far, this episode has been nothing but story times and marriage counseling. The couple with the red bags were a strange pair indeed. Yeah, they were. It boggles the mind to think their relationship can persist despite such intense squabbling. The hell well, is that? That's pretty happy in the end, at least. Maybe the secret to living a happy life is sharing your feelings, even when they're sort of mean and weird. Love. If you adopt such a strategy, I may Aries. leave for groceries one day and never return. Oh, Vice, don't do that to me. Woo! Big fella! Big fella! How's it going? How's it going? Yes, sir! Woo! Hold up now. Oh, we're gonna beat you today. We gotta have some combat in the episode. Outside of that... Oh! Outside of that boar. <laughs> I almost walked right into that. Woo! Alright, I need to be careful. You know, I might actually, uh... Pop one of those, uh, little magic capsules. There we go. I love that move because it like seeks. I love it. Woo! 
All right, you know what? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Doubles magic damage for 30 seconds. So that this will hurt a little bit more. Yeah, I like that a lot. Ow! Nah, uh, keep up the magic pressure. Nope. Nope. There we go. Woo, back up. Got him! Nice! You alright, Kaine? Hey, you are. <laughs> the crappiest thing about this game is you have to do a quest for the shop owner that has the potions and stuff. And I might end up doing it off camera because it's like, I don't... I hate the fact that in order to be able to shop there, I have to do a side quest. But, you know, it's whatever. I'll get it done. That way I can purchase stuff. But I don't have a whole lot of money. So you really, like, have to depend Goodness. on the stuff you find on the like ground. Sounds like the canal repairman had quite the problem on his hands. I'm glad everything turned out all right. Yeah. Pie. Thank you so much for your Solves help. Solves everything. Don't mention it. I'm looking forward to seeing how the canal turns out. If you need anything else from us, just say the word. Hey, wait. Okay. Huh? I was about to say, we going home to Yona? I almost forgot. Yep. Yona is looking for you. Yep. Huh? She said she needed something from you. Time to go play Big Brother for a bit, huh? I'm on it. So, thanks, Pobla. I am on it. Spirit drop. 700 gold the house provides. I have returned. You're back. Hopala said you needed something? Yeah. A favor actually. Aww. What is it? Um I can't help if you don't tell me, sis. Okay, I'm going to say it. Ready? Uh-huh. Ready, Yona. I need you to help my friend. Your friend? Oh. Yes. I have a friend. Oh, I know exactly who this is. Seriously? A pen pal. How delightful. Remember when those were a thing? Now we just have the internet? So who <laughs> is this friend? Um, well, he's kind of... He? It's a guy? Yeah. Yes. And he's sick and in a whole lot of trouble. And I know that you and Vicey are the only ones who can help him. Vicey? Yeah, just get used to it, bruh. Tell me about this guy. He lives in this really big house down south, and he's super nice, and he's my friend. So you have to help him, please. Yona, listen. Please. Aww. Great. Now what do I do? I can't say no. Fine. I'll see what I can do. We know exactly who this friend is. We know exactly who it is. Wait. Yona's got a boyfriend. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna say nothing. There's something amiss, lad. Your voice nope. is trembling. No, it isn't. Shut up. <laughs> yep. Uh, we got to go back out to the Southern Plains, but before that, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to save my game. Oh, yeah, I don't have a map for here, oh, but I do have to go this way. Okay, so I know that because there's this spider over here. This big-ass tarantula. Oh, and then it bursts into smaller spiders. Giant spider silk. Yep. Got him. Yep, all of you die. All of you die. Ow, 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 ow. Get off me. Yeah. Get off me. Yeah. 
Oh, where you running, playboy? Don't run! I say, you will die tired. Wait, I got him. Oh. There we go. Wait, he's not dead yet? Come on now. There. Everybody, go everybody good? All right. There. Jesus. Medicinal herb. Oh, that orb disappeared. Dang. And just look at how the color changes. Oh, I remember this place. We have been waiting for you, sirs. Please, right this way. Lead the way, Alfred. <laughs> I bet she's really nice and always says nice things. I wonder if that's what my mom is like. Look at how monotone everything is. Or is it monochrome? I don't remember. It's one of those words. Oh, I was in his way. Ooh! Best soundtrack ever. The near games always will reign supreme with their uh, soundtracks. No cap, you cannot convince me otherwise. Please wait here. Okay. Waiting's a bitch. Just let me know if any shades show up, okay? All right. Finna take a nap. Oh, she just chilling. All right, let's explore the room. These camera angles can confuse the hell out of me. Yeah, to hell with just waiting. We're gonna explore. So we can't go that way. Is this another door that just leads back in here? No, this is the kitchen. What are we cooking up in here? Nothing. Well, never mind. I, I never did eat. Speaking of which, I'm hungry right now. Yeah, Vice is scared out of his freaking mind. It's interesting. An all-knowing book is afraid of the paranormal. It actually makes sense when you think about it. What's this? The picture has changed. Yo, that is creepy. That is so what? That is so creepy. This door? Yep. Wow, look at this. It looks like it's in pain. It's kind of scary. Yes, come now. Brave faces. Uh, onward and upward, eh? He is scared out of his mind. <laughs> Ooh, box. Hidden items tutorial. Okay. A little bit late for that, but all right. The moon key. All right, so this will get us into the door marked as moon. Shades. Ooh, what I, I'm telling you, I don't know why those shades popping up made me jump, but they did. Hold did they call from? They, these shades made me jump. Get a ball. Yep, yep, yep. Ah! Oh, I thought I was, I thought I was gonna parry that, but never mind. There we go. I thought I parried that. Use the moon key. All right, now who was in here screaming for help? What's this way? 
I don't want to go that way yet. I want to come this way, because there's a door down here. Star, okay. A fucking bug in here. The hell? Oh! Nope! Get out of here, spider! Nope! 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 Good night! Thank you! Kill the spiders! Get in them guts! You're a male. Young. Not even 20. Hello, Emil. You look good. You look good. I think in uh, Near Gestalt, from my it was like over 40, I think is what he it's said. It's not hard once you know how. Yeah, he's blind. And I suppose I should tell you about my friend Vice. I... I only heard one set of footsteps. Grimoire Vice does not strut about like a common land mammal. But enough of this introductory <laughs> chatter. Let us hear your tale. My name is Emil. I'm the master of this manor. So you're the one who sent the letters? Letters? What are you talking about? Oh boy! Of course you don't know. Such a thing would be far too simple. Yeah, how could he send letters when he's blind? No! Stay back! Huh? I'm sorry. It's my eyes. Oh! Anything I look at gets turned to stone. Oh, that's right. No, never mind. He's got the Medusa eyes. That's why I live with this blindfold. What a remarkable skill. I've never heard of such a thing. Anyway, I suppose my butler might know more about the letters you received. This key here can unlock any door in the manor, so if you'd like my assistance... No, please, don't trouble yourself. We can get around on our own. Yeah. Oh, right. Sure. Well, here's the key then. The butler's quarters are at the far end of the manor. Let me at least give you a map. It's a big place, and I don't want you to get lost. Good looking out. So, it's not the fact that, like I said, he's not blind. It's just, if he looks at anybody, they turn to stone. So, technically, he could write the letters. Nice. What should we do about Kanye? Put the uh, blindfold her. back on and, and give it to the butler. Jeez. Something like I that. You need to never get on your bad side. So I was given the star key, which is right here. Ooh, we got three, uh, two ways to go. Let's go this way. Anything? Oh, hey, it's the butler. What's that? A butler, or at least a remarkable likeness of one. I knew this was a trap. Curse my brilliant intuition. Interesting. Robot Butler. Let's go in here. No Butler in here. I don't know if that was Kine or not. Let's just check every room. There has to be a safe spot in one of these rooms. <laughs> so. Haunted Mansion. Shades. Whoa! 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 Tight corners! Whoa! Whoa! Tight corners! Or tight walls, something, something, I don't know. It's just, we got problems while they're in here. That's all I'm saying. Tight spaces, that's the word I was thinking of. Tight corners? Fucking spider! No, I was trying to kill the spider. Oh, whatever. Ooh. Light key. Hey, 
There we go. Sometimes it is very hard to aim that spell. It is very hard to aim it sometimes. Nah, fam. <laughs> nah, fam. Let me, uh, let me head out. Is this the real butler? Whoa. Is that another one? Hmm. What? <laughs> it moves. What's going on here? What? Sir? Uh, what is this? <coughs> oh, this is my butler. He helps me out around the manor. He's a good man at heart, but a bit inflexible. Almost like a statue. More like an animatronic. Yes, and I do apologize for that, Master Emil. <laughs> I doubt he's even human. We're here because my sister received some letters from this manor. He probably isn't. Did you hear them, mm, Gears? Yes, I wrote those letters. Ah, oh, okay. Please forgive my impertinence. Weirdo. As you may know, Master Emil, deeply pained by his eyes, has shut himself away from the world. Can you imagine living with that? Knowing you're not blind, but you can't look at anybody because you'll turn them to stone? He suffers greatly behind that blindfold, and I feel it is my duty to help however I can. I heard tale of the exploits of an emerging hero, and so I sent a letter to you under Master Emil's name. But I received a response from one Miss Yona instead. Wait, so Yona's pen pal is you? Yeah. It is, sir. My letters merely requested that you come to the manor. I meant no real intent. I believe Yona saw the exchange somewhat differently. That's a kid for you. Yeah, sounds like she misunderstood the situation. Regardless, I am quite pleased to see you here. Long have I dreamed of the day we might be able to do something about Master Emil's eyes. I see. Yes, well, I am afraid we... Or at least this lad beside me is neither here nor <laughs> physician, so if you'll excuse us... He's trying to get out of Dodge. Please, we're so close. The cure for Master Emil's condition is located in this very manor. Then why don't you just go get it? Alas, the location of the cure has become a den for those abominable shades, and I lack the skill to combat them. I beg of you, defeat the shades and restore Master Emil's sight. You know this is an impossible task. Why would you ask it of our guests? Because we can handle it. Well, we've no more time to waste, so... It's okay. We'll do it. See here, lad. This is no time to play the hero. Hush. People need to look out for each other, Vice. Plus, we have to find Kaine anyway. A thousand thank yous. I owe you a debt that can never be repaid. Just don't shake your head like that again and we'll call it square. Get off me. Stone. And they're just done. Like, petrification is literally the strongest power ever. Like, even in Greek mythology, even the gods feared Medusa. Blade of Treachery. Now, how do... Yes. And that's heavy. That's heavy? I mean, it isn't that bad. It isn't that bad. Anything in here? Nope. Looks like an empty room. It's locked. Ah, oh, dang it. There we go. Ow! Good lord. I keep forgetting my button so I'm not blocking when I when I think I am. Yep. Emil is just, yep. All he has to do is just look at him. Get off me. Get 
Bring the masses and bring your asses if that's what y'all want to do. Ow. Got it. Yep, petrified while you're laying on the ground. Woo! Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god! I was literally tr Oh, I can't dodge while I'm in this house. Willie? The bad part is, I'm in this room, I can't dodge. I literally have to rely on parrying. Oh my god! What the hell? Good lord! That should not have been that complicated! Yep. And just stone. <laughs> stone! Emil is fucking amazing! And here's a save point. Well, alrighty, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna call the episode here. We didn't get into a whole lot of action. It was more of a lore story time. We're, we're getting there. We have a new friend, Emil, and for those of you who know, you know. But I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, why not leave the video a like? Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and if you haven't already, why not consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any more of this mayhem. Until next time, I appreciate all of you for watching. Like and subscribe for more, for I will continue to make these videos for many moons. Stay safe out there, and never forget to holla at your bear. Peace out.